Hi, everyone. Welcome to the second episode of our Beach Boys Reddit interview series. Today, we're thrilled to have Scott Mejnick, also known as Fuel Flows 409 on YouTube, joining us. Uh, Scott is famous in the Beach Boys fan community for his incredible piano tutorials and demos of Beach Boys and Brian Wilson songs, uh, mainly focusing on the music of Smile. He's also a passionate collector of Beach Boys records and memorabilia. We feel lucky to have him as our guest today. Uh, before we get too far, uh, Scott, thank you for being here. Uh, your work has had a profound impact on the Beach Boys community, inspiring many to delve deeper into the music and learning to play it themselves. Uh, we understand the importance of the community that supports the Beach Boys and keeps their music musical legacy alive, and we're grateful for your contributions. I'm grateful for you having me on here, Katie. Thank you. You're welcome. So let's get started. So what inspired you to start teaching Beach Boy songs on the piano on YouTube? There were <clears throat> a couple of, of influences. One, I would be remiss if I didn't mention um, one of my friends from college. I had a close friend who I knew and met in college, and we continued our friendship for many, many, many years after that. Um, she was an aspiring musician and songwriter, and she always kind of thought that I might be good at it and wanted me to take up an instrument. Um, at first, she was like, you should play bass. And then I'm like, eh, I don't know about bass. My father played bass when uh, he was uh, in his teens and in young adult years. But um, bass is very specific. Mm -hmm. So I was like, OK, well, if I want to play these songs, really how they are, you know, sounding on the records, I really should either learn guitar or I should learn piano. I picked guitar initially. Mm -hmm. And then I was like this. No, because the finger contortions that you have to, to do mm -hmm. to make some of the chords were just like that's no didn't work for me um so I tried piano and piano I really took to um mm -hmm. Brian Wilson as many 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 fans know is a is primarily a piano based composer I mean he his main instruments were a bass and piano and those mm -hmm. were instruments that he thought in terms of when he was composing a song the bass would be literally the bass where everything on top, you know, he would build from the bass, he would stack things up. And the piano really was the instrument where he was, you know, uh, basically it, it best represented the harmonic qualities that he wanted in his music. Um, mm -hmm. It was best able to capture that, the chords that he was using, you know, he uses a lot of jazz chords and uh, you don't really see as many of those chords on guitar. They're sometimes a little hard to transpose. So that was number one. Um, and then the other major influence was um, I came across a channel on YouTube that by the time I came across it had long not been active anymore. And I don't really know, like he seems to have been off you of YouTube for many years now, unfortunately. Um, but he was great and like kind of inspired me to want to play in that style mm -hmm. and eventually my own tutorials like that's what led to it um, is I think his name I'm going off of memory here Drawboy613 it's mm. been a little bit on his YouTube channel but he had some smile songs on there um, mm -hmm. and he really kind of was my inspiration in terms of wanting to learn the songs in that style. Um, I find playing the melody a little bit boring. I like the chords. Um, so yes, uh, he was a big influence too. I don't want to forget him. That's fantastic. So how did you develop your style of piano covers and tutorials? Because everybody kind of has their own sort of way they teach. How did the way you teach on YouTube come around? Um, the two, two main inspirations for that. Um, one was one, like going back to draw boy 613 and him, mm -hmm. he didn't do a lot of tutorials about the beach boys. I think he had a couple of other tutorials for other songs by other artists, but one of the ones that he did was, uh, the tutorial for surfs up. And mm -hmm. I really liked 
that kind of, you know, breaking the song down here, the individual notes, you know, he's not throwing a lot of, you know, terminology at you. And when he does, he's explaining it. Mm -hmm. So that was one model. The other model is really just my own experience. Um, I worked in education for about eight, nine, 10 years, Oh, um, wow. specifically higher education. And so I've taught college courses before. Mm Um, hmm I was a professor. I was what's called an instructor. You know, instructors are basically a professor without a PhD, which mm hmm happens. Um, but I taught several college courses. I kind of developed my own style of breaking things down. So I have a pretty good understanding of, you know, how do I make this as accessible as possible for as many people as possible? Um, and so I just kind of developed my own style as well based off of that experience. That's wonderful. And uh, let me ask, which Beach Boys song is your favorite to play and why? The boring answer is Surf's Up, because most people who know me know that uh, I love, love, love that song. I'm actually going to say Our Prayer. Interesting. And why it's my favorite is there are so many chords in that song. There are so many Yes. chords. It's, it's a minute and what, six seconds, nine seconds? Yes, it is. Yep, around there. It's crazy, but it's the most beautiful piece It's up there with any other beautiful piece that you could play or sing, of course. And um, I just like that. I spent probably the most amount of time learning that particular song, how to play it on piano, than I did any other song. And the other songs that I'm playing are twice its length, three times, four times its length. But um, I just have a, a love of that, A, that track in general, but B, Mm -hmm. I really like how it plays on piano. It's just this elegant it gives you piece. chills Yes. Yep. <laughs> um so what has been the most rewarding part of teaching others how to play beach boy songs for you Getting people to realize that they can do it too. Because I am, like, I had no formal training myself. I am self-taught. And listen, I'm not the greatest piano player. I'm not even, I don't consider myself good. And if I'm, if, in my opinion... If people are really being honest, I'm really not that good. I'm not. Um, I'm a much better, in my opinion, instructor of piano and breaking this stuff down than I am with playing it. My, the idea behind the whole demo stuff is really just to give a sense of, okay, in the end, it should sound something like this, um, which I think is important Um Because like that's the end result. Um, you want to hear everything all put together. It's one thing to hear it broken down into individual parts, but it's another thing altogether to hear it in its entirety. And if people are entertained, if they like those demos, those piano demos, great. Um, but that's actually not really even why I make them. <laughs> I make them more as just example case study pieces where, you know, they're accompanying basically my... tutorials Mm hmm. Right. Right. So have you encountered any particular memorable or challenging moments while creating your tutorials? do you mean in terms of the recording process or do you mean in terms of the learning process myself Either or anything either one either one. nothing really jumps out at me i will say that there there have been there's at least one cover i had on my youtube channel i never really liked it I didn't like how it turned out. I took it down. That's actually the child of his father of the man uh, demo. Um, I didn't really play it well at all. So I'm like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to take this down. But uh, other than that, not nothing really jumps out at me. Um, I will say that I've been learning God Only Knows, a specific arrangement of God Only Knows that has been quite challenging. Um, Mm-hmm. And so that is still a work in progress. And I've been working on that for longer than I care to admit. Well, that's okay. We appreciate your uh, dedication to that. No. So can you walk with us through the process of how you um, arrange a Beach Boy song for piano on your channel? Like how, like how you get from your 
from hearing it to your head thinking, oh my goodness, how am I going to teach this, you know, arrange this to getting this on YouTube? A lot of it doesn't really even come from my head per se. Um, one of the things viewers will notice when they watch my demos and sometimes he, well, even when they watch my, um, my tutorials is that I have the sheet music for the songs that I'm playing on my sheet rack. Um, and so a lot of that is already in there. So it's going to mm. tell me, the, it's going to tell me the chords, et cetera. So I'll use a combination of that and then a com uh, in com combination with what I hear on the record. So I will sometimes listen to the record over and over and over and over and over again an absurd amount of times just to try to get a sense of, okay, what is this that I'm hearing in terms of, you know, you name it, bass chords, which are sometimes hard to hear, Um and also getting a sense of the overall track. So one of the things about my channel and the style of music that I'm doing is I'm making piano accompaniment arrangements where the piano is basically mimicking the backing track as a whole. It's not mimicking necessarily what the piano in a track is playing or whatever piano-based instrument we're talking about. Um, there are other channels on YouTube that do that really really well um i want to shout out to devin lawrence whose channel he does that style of uh cover where he just does the piano parts and it's amazing um he is second to none with his uh covers but what i do is i'm really looking for what is the overall track doing and how do i actually get that to sound like that when i'm playing it on piano how close can i get how close can't i get what is the sheet music telling me? What is the track doing? You know, mm -hmm. sheet music often is wrong. In fact, I have yet to uh, encounter a case where a sheet music uh, sheet music wasn't wrong. They're always wrong in some ways, I, I, in my experience. So you have to also do the other way, which is listen, 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 and figure things out just through that. And awesome. in terms of the tutorial style um again it, it's a combination of just kind of what i've seen other people do on youtube in terms of their own tutorial videos for those that do have them but also drawing upon my own teaching style i very much like to break things down to their simplest because you reach, reach the the widest audience the the less barriers people have the better because that's the goal. Like okay. I said, it's, I want them to like, you know, once upon a time, I was like, you know, I wish I could do that. I can't do that. And then I tried it and I learned it and then I did it. So practice, practice, practice. Amen. Um, so let me ask you next, how do you decide which songs to cover next? Is there a particular like criteria that you have where you're like, okay, this this is something that I can do versus, oh God, this is something that I cannot transcribe to my style. It's a combination of just how I feel and mm -hmm. also what makes sense given what I've done before and mm -hmm. how much free time I have to actually figure this stuff out. <laughs> so lately I've had very little free time. So, you know, when I get around to doing my next tutorial, which it's been a while, life has gotten in the way of um, my ability to dedicate a lot of time to piano uh, in the past couple of years, unfortunately. But when I do get back into it, it's probably going to be with a, a simpler piece mm -hmm. and then up from there. So like one of the things I was thinking about is, okay, what would I do next? And my answer to that is I'm either going to do uh, roll Plymouth Rock, since I did Heroes and Villains. Um, or I'll do a simple one like Barnyard, like the Barnyard Suite. Oh. Or I might do Vegetables, the Smile. Oh, mm -hmm. oh. I've been learning vegetables. So, you know, keep, keep your eye out for that eventually. Oh, that will be fun. I'm going to look forward to that. So what do you think makes the music of the Beach Boys so timeless and unique for you? 
people ask me that question, they say, and I'm sure they ask that of a lot of fans. It's like, why does this music connect so, so much with you? And it's a hard thing to answer because I think you know what I'm talking about in terms of yeah. it's not always so straightforward. Absolutely. Um, I can describe it is it is this combination of spirituality in the music and love mm -hmm. in the music, but also emotions that are not that, that are embedded in the music. The music, I, Carl Wilson once said, it's a celebration of life. And that's true, but I also think it's a bit of an oversimplification. I think really when you get right down to what is music, music is, it, it's something that I feel strongly, it has to speak to your soul. If you're, if you're digesting music predominantly up here and not here, I feel like you're, you're missing the point of music almost. So Brian Wilson's music and the music of the Beach Boys in general does a great job of just conveying that sense of yearning, but happiness, hope, spirituality, this connectiveness. Um, it's hard to describe beyond that, but, you know, mm -hmm. it just grabs hold of your soul and doesn't let go. Absolutely. And I would say the same thing as well. So good job. <laughs> so how has teaching these songs influenced your own musical growth? This is pretty much what I do. So in terms of musical growth, what do you mean specifically in terms of like just, my own music or? Yeah. Or own, just... I actually don't make my own music. <laughs> <laughs> I can't answer that. It, I, all I can say is that it's helped me gain an even greater appreciation for the music itself. Um, it's one thing to be a listener, mm -hmm. and it's another thing entirely to learn how these songs are constructed on a chord level. You know, um, I'd say cordial le level, but that doesn't sound right. <laughs> cordial. Um <laughs> But yes, um, it's gain. It's really helped me gain a greater appreciation for this, like viewing songs in a different way. Because um, that's another thing. It's like I said before, I find playing the melody kind of boring. But yeah. because the melody is what you're drawn to, but also mm -hmm. you're just, you know you're playing notes, you know, one note, two notes at a time, go in different places. But 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 like you know. That's not terribly interesting to me because as a listener, that's where my mind goes anyway when I'm listening to a song. It's you focus on the melody primarily. Mm -hmm. What is the song doing? But when you kind of get into the chord structure of the song, you're dealing with the skeleton. So I, I really, really enjoy that aspect of it. But in terms of my own growth as a musician, well, since I just kind of do this for fun, not nothing really, <laughs> but as a list, a music appreciator and listener, it has been very rewarding. That's fantastic. Yeah. And are there any interesting stories or connections you've made through doing these tutorials on YouTube? Yes and no, kind of in a roundabout way. Um, before you and I started the interview, I'll just bring mm -hmm. up. People not like I was telling you, Katie, you know, now I get recognized at the, at places or by certain fans and, and that's something new. So <laughs> I will say that uh, one of the things that has been um, good is to connect with people that I otherwise would not have gotten to connect with. Um, my friend DJ who um, I did like that four and a half hour feel flows box set review on my channel. That's not one of my most watched videos. And I remember that I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, that it's not one of my most watched and you know, it's a lot. <laughs> it's literally two Beach Boys nerds geeking out to this stuff for four and a half hours. So if that's your kind of thing, which it is for him and I, <laughs> uh, you know, 
go go watch that. But um, he was somebody who I really like. I, it was just kind of by chance, and um, I met him a little bit before the time period where I started, um, you know, making these uh, tutorials. But as mm -hmm. I kind of got here, he and I were able to do certain collaborations. We did one video uh, after the Feel Flows box set reviews that was posted to his YouTube channel. And it was just us geeking out over our collections. And so he, like, you know, the fact that I had that audience is what allowed him and I to collaborate on that. Um I've run into and had the pleasure of meeting other Beach Boys fans. And, you know, I probably would not have gotten that kind of opportunity without doing what I've been doing on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. um, some random people I can name. You know, I ran into Giggins uh, last year, little, last year, roughly around this time frame, summer. Um, and so getting to meet him was really cool. It was really serendipitous that he and I ran into each other. Um, and I, I I could go further, but I feel like I'd be boring people. But it's just been very rewarding in that sense, in terms of making connections with people. That's great. That's great. Are there any other artists or genres you're interested in exploring in the future, teaching-wise? There are, actually. Um, so... I'll say this, one of my favorite Beatles songs, and since I was a kid, I've loved this song, is Hey Jude. And I've looked at, like, you know, materials and how to play that and sort of my style. And so I'd really like to do that. Um, that's one artist slash song that I really like. And there's other Beatles songs I'd like to throw in there as well. Um, part of me wants to say the Rolling Stones, but the Rolling Stones weren't very piano heavy in their music. So I don't know, I don't know about that, but if that's doable, I'd like to throw in some Rolling Stone stuff. I'm a big fan of their psychedelic era, which most people I find don't I even know that they had a psychedelic era. <laughs> but you know, the, the the trilogy of albums that they put out, um, Aftermath, Between the Buttons, and their Satanic Majesty's Request it are like three of my favorite albums of all time. Um, I really love how the stones were creative during that period. As to how much I can incorporate into tutorials and demos and things like that, I don't know. But that's on my wish list. There have been a couple of other ones that I've been wanting to do. And I don't know if I want to like commit to doing them right now because they'd be a lot of work. But um, I like symphonic music. I like soundtrack music for movies. Yeah. John Williams... I'd love to learn some John Williams stuff on piano and do that. Um, there's some amazing stuff out there right now on YouTube already, but I'd love to to pick that up and just be able to to learn that and maybe do a tutorial in my own style for some key songs of his that I love. Um, and there's a couple of other ones, video game soundtracks, things like that. I'm a big Resident Evil fan of, as far as video mm. games go. So there are some really amazing pieces of music in the Resident Evil franchise. One of the ones that um, I was toying with a couple of years ago in terms of, should I learn this right now or should I just put this to the side? And I put it to the side. But um, there's a piece called Bersus, Bersus in uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica which came out in the year 2000. It's a very beautiful piece. It, it sounds very classical, um, but I'd love to learn that. Um, and there's other ones I could go on, but you get the other. <laughs> I'll start submitting some, uh, uh, seeking some under your door, some Final Fantasy, and she's a rainbow. And... <laughs> Final Fantasy. That's another video game franchise I love with amazing music. Yes. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I'm going to... That should be my next next podcast. But uh, so 
we're, let's go back to the Beach Boys for a second. So, mm -hmm. what are so you do? I know you collect, but what are some of your favorite Beach Boys memorabilia that you've collected over the years? Is there any particular pieces that you really hold tightly? Uh, yep. So, I mean, the low hanging fruit one is my light up box set, Smile Sessions box set that I got signed. Um, obviously they all came signed by Brian, but I added Al, Mike, and Bruce's signature to it. That's very dear to me. Um, I got to meet a lot of the Beach Boys through getting their, their autographs added to that. So, and, and that's my favorite music of all time. So, uh, that goes without saying, even though I've said a lot about that already in this, in this interview. Yeah. Um, so other stuff that I really, really value um, that are you know sentimental value to me. Uh, there is a uh, CD, actually two CDs that I managed to get from the widow of a, of a, I wouldn't say famous fan, but a noteworthy fan. He was the host of several concerts that the Beach Boys did out in Hawaii, I think in Honolulu, um, during the late 80s and early 90s. Hmm. And... He passed away around five-ish years ago, I want to say. And mm. his widow um, was kind of clearing out his collection. And I came across her posting for two CDs. And I'm like, am I seeing what I think I'm seeing with this CD? Because it was a copy. It was a 1990 copy, you know, the 1990 releases of yeah. a CD. Um, and, the the cover of the CD, um, the booklet that serves as the cover was signed by all of the Beach Boys, San, uh, the main Beach Boys, Sans Dennis, unfortunately, but Carl's signatures was, wow. and I'm like, that, that I, I, I'm familiar enough with his signature to know, like, that looks legit. Um, yeah. and I'm like that's like a white whale kind of thing for me, you know? So I contacted her and we negotiated a price. And I also bought my second or third, depending on if you count Smile or not, but second or third favorite Beach Boys album, which he had also gotten signed at the same event, same signatures, Friends. The Friends wow. 2020 twofer. Um, yeah, I remember that. So he, his widow basically negotiated a price with me um, and I have them in my other room here. Um, they're just having Carl's signature and also the story that goes along with it was really, really important to me. And I do really value those. Um, he kept them in great condition. So no, you know, I'm, I'm glad for that. Um, but wow. just having any. And Carl, you know, I mean, absolutely, he's still so, so missed too. Yeah, so you know, uh, that's pretty important to me. I I do value those sentimentally, um, even though I didn't, I like you know, didn't, wasn't the one who asked for the autograph. It wasn't originally mine. Just having that in my collection, I I you know, I take great care of this stuff. Um, it does mean a lot to me. Um, so there's that. Um, there's also the fact that I have the box set now that first introduced me to the Beach Boys as a kid. Um, so some people may have heard this story, others have not. So I'll just mm -hmm. say it, be, I'll try to be quick with it. Yeah. Um, but I was made a fan, essentially, of the Beach Boys vis-a-vis -vis my father, who was also a fan. And he has his own history that I could go into. I'm not going to get into that because that would just lengthen it unnecessarily in you know, what I'm about to say. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, he bought the Good Vibrations 30 Years of the Beach Boys box sets when I was a little kid. He used to play that. And for, you know, that was just the first time I heard, you know, music that connected with me on that level that was just indescribable. Um, I actually say to people, you know, you don't hear a lot from me about like, I don't tend to talk about songs like I get around that often. 
but I love I get around and I get around was my, like my, my entryway. That was what did it for me as a kid. Um, One of mine too. yeah. And, you know, I still love it to this day. And I, obviously loads and loads and loads of people do. Um, but that's what did it for me. And it was on that box set and lo and behold, you know, 20 something odd years later, It gets passed down to me and I have it in my other room here. So just having that, you know, uh, it does mean a lot to me. Uh, there are other cool ones too, in terms of um, items that I really value. Um, but I'm going to keep it short because I could go on for too long. We'll have to do a part two about your memorabilia sometime, Scott. <laughs> so I'd appreciate these these that. final two questions are going to be ones I all I ask each of my guests. So uh, you get to be the second guinea pig in the um, in the troop here. So if there is one thing you would like to tell younger fans or fans just getting into the Beach Boys, what is one thing that you think they should know? that the Beach Boys were way more than their popular hits than the 62 to 65 era, which it seems like for some people, that's all they are. When people say the Beach Boys, they think of this surf band. And like, when you really break it down, you know, what years were they singing about surfing actively? You know, what, what years were, was that their thing? And it was a big thing, but like what you break it down, let's say, Yeah, you know, the band's been in existence for 62 years now. Um, break it down in terms of what years were they actually actively singing about surfing as a as a theme, as a like their band theme. It's two. It's really two of those years. <laughs> two out of 62 years. So, Right. you know, their their period where they kind of. Uh, their output gets more sporadic and it's less consistent and, you know, things like that. So not everything that comes after those two years is anywhere near as good as those two years, but there are a lot more than just that. I love the fact that, you know, whenever we talk as uh, h
I want everybody to know that because this is just some of the most incredible things ever recorded, ever made musically. There are no words. Exactly. All righty. So my last question for you is imagine a Beach Boys fan 50 to 100 years in the future. What do you hope for Beach Boys fans of the next generation? I'm hoping. All right. So this is going to be a little bit of a hot take. I'm hoping that in 50 to 100 years that the Beach Boys fans around then are going to be less uh, partisan in terms of their band affiliations. In other words, I feel like right now, and for most of the band's history, we have a Brian camp and we have a Mike camp, you know, and the relations, but like, you know, it's like, you know what I'm talking about. So people in the past have said to me, I've gotten everything in, in, in between, you know, I've gotten accused of being a Mike Love hater, a Mike Love defender, everything in between and i'm like i'm not a hater or defender of mike love mike love is a human being they all were and we all are and human beings are flawed by their very nature mm -hmm. um and i really think that uh there is this um narrative that i get why that narrative exists. And like, you know, there are times, plenty of times, plenty, plenty, emphasis on plenty, a third time, um, where Mike Love does things that I disagree with or that I shake my head at, or I just don't think is, is good for the band's legacy, but he's a part of the band's legacy. And there are people out there, I feel like, that want to deny him of that. And, um, I don't think that that's accurate. I don't think that that is uh, anything that some uh, that you know a fan of the band should be aiming to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I wish that in the future, this kind of partisan divide, if you will, quote unquote, ends, and we can just kind of appreciate the music, the story, the history for what it is, and revel in that uh because it does get a little tiring to read <laughs> sometimes and hear about understood completely well scott it's been a pleasure to have you here we're looking forward to the insightful questions that you that our audience will have for your ama in the next coming weeks thank you for sharing your time with us thanks for tuning in i'm katie webb and remember to keep an eye on summer <laughs>